So Saturday, not only a big day for fight day, but it's also your birthday. How exciting is that? <laughs> it's exciting. Um, I mean, and everybody loves to celebrate their birthday. Um, so obviously I'm going to have a, a great celebration, hopefully after the fight. Yeah, there's not a much better gift to give yourself than a win, right? That's all we've been saying. For sure. So what do you think of this fight? I mean, obviously Raquel has been in there, you know, her past five have pretty much only been against champions, former champions, or, you know, the top contenders. So what can a win over her do for your career? I think this is a great fight and it's a great matchup. You know, if you look at both Raquel and I, we both match up fairly well, um, both in the standing and, you know, I'd say on the ground as well. So I think it's going to be an exciting fight. It was one that was bound to happen. It was something that we anticipated happening. Um, but it happened a lot sooner than we thought, you know, because I was supposed to fight Vieira before. So this one happened a little bit sooner. No problem. Okay, cool. So, and obviously the past two, you know, haven't gone your way. Are you feeling any extra level of pressure coming into this fight because of that? No, you know, learning um, as a heptathlete when I was in college, I had seven different events that I had to do. If I had an event that was bad, I had to learn to get over that event. I had to learn to get over that event fairly quickly. And that's something that my coaches back then worked on with me. So it's something that I've um, brought to the game um, of MMA, basically. Sure, I didn't like the decisions um, from my last fight and the fight before I lost, but I don't put pressure on myself. I have to move forward. So it's not something that I focus on. I've learned that at an early age and it's followed me to now. Awesome. And just last thing, um, just tell me what life has kind of been like for you through the pandemic and everything. Obviously, you know, you're, you're a teacher as well. Um, I assume there's, there's no school going on or anything. So just how has everything impacted you on that front? It was crazy how everything happened and it was all of a sudden at once and then everybody was afraid and scared and it it was it was really not a great year for our students the way we ended. Um, so I feel kind of bad for them. I feel for our seniors, my son being a senior himself. I feel that they, I feel bad that they did not have the graduation that everybody else has had or had the farewell um, that they needed to have as seniors. Uh, as a business owner, we had to shut down for a couple of months. I feel bad for businesses who had to close permanently. It's It's been a crappy situation for a lot of people. And so we've had to dig deep and pretty much endure a lot. But we have we feel fairly well and blessed. We came out on top. Everything worked out the way it needed to work out. And so we're just moving forward from it. So how crucial just into the overall life element is this opportunity on Saturday? Obviously, you know, a paycheck coming potentially too with the wins. Uh, how big will that be for you? Any win is going to be a big win. So I'm not looking at it as like I need it financially, but I always go into every fight with the mentality that I'm starving for that paycheck. So it'll be 100% useful. Awesome. Thank you, Marianne, and happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. Our next question is from Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Side Press. Marian, I wanted to um, expand a little more on what Mike Bond was asking. As a teacher, you know, this has just been an unprecedented time, right? I mean, I guess, what has been your message to your students? Because obviously, that's a, it's different for everybody. So how do you kind of just keep doing, I guess, your part as the instructor? I predominantly have freshman females. That's it. I only do freshman females. I guess I'm lucky that way. And basically, I just keep telling them to move forward. This is not the end. This is just um, a part of history that they get to live through. They didn't get to live through the 9-11 history, which I love to talk to them about. But I talk to them about this history as well. And they're going to make it through this history. It's going to be a lot of changes, but just to keep moving forward. And I urge them, obviously, to reach out if they ever need anything. And I do get a lot of them who reach out. And it's great that they can trust me in that aspect. But um, it's just something that you just have to keep on them. You just you can't let them think that they're doing this alone, that their families are doing it alone. There's always somebody out there to help them out. Uh, with the pandemic, obviously, I'm assuming a lot of it is building the lesson plan, sending it to them virtually and everything else. Did you find time to pick up any other hobbies while at home? Did you binge the Tiger King like other people? What was your thing? Um, no. 
we did watch Tiger King, but I can't believe I sat through the whole thing. I felt brain cells were dying as I was watching it, so I don't really like it. And um, I picked up gardening. I finished every project that I ever had it. I have ever had ever had in my house. Um, I pretty much finished all those projects, and um, I just picked up some gardening and started playing with my dog. Started training my my new little pup. I have a new little Vishla pup. Is very rambunctious. Um, he touched on it a little bit, just, you know, the fact that you are on a two-fight skid. When you go back to camp, I guess, how how do you cut out a lot of that? You know, like, obviously it could be a little stress, but how do you cut it out to get the focus and be like, hey, this is a brand new fight, brand new challenge, I need to approach it this way? Just like what you said, it's not something that I dwell on. I don't look in the past. I can't look in the rearview mirror if I want to go move forward. So I just keep my eye on the prize and just keep moving forward. I can't can't control what happened in the past. So there's literally no point in dwelling on it. Gotcha. Final one from me. What are you most proud of that you've developed in your game over the last few months? Or is that a secret? Oh, I, I'm most proud of um, my wrestling that I've developed um, in the last few months. Um, actually, it's been something that we've been working on in the past few years. It's just finally starting to come together. Thank you, Marion. Our next question is from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Marion. Uh, I'll say happy birthday ahead of time as well. Uh, how has training during the, the quarantine been for you? Because I spoke to Aspen Ladd about a week ago, and she said that, you know, just due to timing and everything, she didn't get a chance to work with you as much. Obviously, she's fighting Sarah McMahon, a common opponent. How is it for you, like your training changes, not working with some of the same people, things like that? Mm, in, in in all honesty, I've been fortunate enough to have training partners who would still came in, and I'm lucky enough to have my own gym so I could train at any time that I wanted to train. Now, as far as my coaches, you know, I had one coach who went under quarantine, which was understandable, but I was able to – use somebody else in the meantime. So I, it's not like I missed a step. I feel like I, I was more focused on my camp more than ever before because I didn't have outside work, job, et cetera. It's something that I typically don't experience as a fighter only because I, I do work. I do have a full-time job um, and I am a business owner. So this was something that it was just more keened into my training. You mentioned somebody got quarantined. Did somebody close to you end up, did they have COVID? Did that happen? No, but he felt more comfortable because he had small kids at home and his parents. So one of my coaches, he just quarantined himself just to be on the safe side, which was understandable. And it was only for about a couple of weeks, and then we were back at it. Gotcha. Uh, obviously, you were going to fight Ketlin Vieira in May, of course, with the travel, you know, the restrictions, things like that, the opponent change. But you go from a predominant grappler in, in Ketlin Vieira to more of a brawler in, in, in Raquel Pennington, somebody who does like to stand up and kind of trade. I mean, obviously you fought every kind of fighter. Did you mind that stylistic change? Did you welcome that stylistic change? No, I didn't mind it at all. In fact, it, like I said, it was, it was something we anticipated in the future, um, having to fight Raquel. So it wasn't something that I was like, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that I'm fighting her. No, I'm, I'm happy. She she took this fight because I know there wasn't a lot of options right now, especially during quarantine. And, and last thing for me, we talked to uh, Raquel earlier. Obviously, this division, the bantamweight division, Amanda Nunes is sitting on top as champion. But I'm sure you saw her comments recently where she said she was contemplating retirement. Uh, kind of a two-part question. Like, what did you make of that when you hear about you know the dominant champion in your division thinking about walking away? And do you believe Amanda Nunes is actually going to walk away? You know, She's done a lot in MMA, and I, I think in a short period of time, and she's capitalized on it. She's ready to start a family. If she wants to retire, nobody's going to hold it against her, hopefully not. She's done a lot. She set herself up. So if she does retire, she retires on top. That's a great thing to do. She retires with her baby and her family. I think that's amazing. There's nothing like having a child. She's going to have the best time of her life forever. <laughs> Thank you, Marion. Mm -hmm.